first guest today, Judge Bob Flanders, GOP nominee for Senate here in Rhode Island. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Rachel. Delighted Thank you for to be joining here. us. So, big news today. Bobby Nardalillo has stepped down from the race following your nomination. What, what was your initial reaction? Well, I was surprised, but uh, gratified that he had decided to do that. Uh, I think it was a very statesmanlike thing for him to do. I give him a lot of credit. He uh, uh, fought a good campaign, um, and uh, I think he has a bright future uh, as a politician in the state. And, but it certainly uh, clears the field here and enables me to concentrate on the main event, which is uh, uh, Senator Whitehouse and, and uh, making sure that my message can get out there uh, without being um, waylaid for the next couple of months in a primary, which is very late in Rhode Island. Absolutely, September yes. It's, it's actually the latest in the country, as I learned exactly. um, just this past week. So what are the, the main issues that you're running on for your campaign? Well, I think I'm running on trying to serve Rhode Island interests. I think we've been neglected uh, to, for too long. We've got an all-Republican Congress, an all-Republican executive branch. It would help Rhode Island, in my opinion, to have at least one person down there uh, in the same party as the, the ones that are controlling the Congress and, and the executive branch. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's going to continue. Uh, and so I think we need an advocate for the things that most Rhode Islanders uh, are concerned about. Health care, for example. Absolutely. Roads and bridges, um, infrastructure uh, of all sorts, uh, immigration. These are issues that need uh, both sides to work together and stop all the partisanship and let's get down to work and get something done for people here in the state. So you believe the, the, the current seat, Senator Whitehouse, is, has been remiss in Yeah, he's been a hyper-partisan. He's, he's uh, really towing the, uh, the Senator Schumer-Pelosi line. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a, restriction, uh, a, a um, obstructionist, in my opinion, and he's not helping to get things done. Look, we're gonna, you're going to need to compromise in this Congress. Uh, especially in the Senate, and uh, we've got too many issues that are hanging fire without uh, coming to some resolution that would be helpful on all these fronts that matter to most people and the things they talk about at the dinner table. So I want to work for the average working Rhode Islander, the small businesses, and to help uh, Rhode Island get to a better place. And so some of the really major issues that have been addressed in our country right now, particularly the opioid crisis, it yes. seems every day there's new truly saddening statistics about the number of overdoses and the availability of, of these drugs. What do you think should be done to help curb the crisis? Well, the first thing that needs to be done is to repeal the legislation that unfortunately uh, Senator Whitehouse sponsored, which gutted the Drug Enforcement Agency's authority to shut down these pill mills that were flooding the market with these addictive substances. We need to get that off the books and restore the, the authority uh, there. But beyond that, we need to uh, do a, a comprehensive education uh, um, uh, initiative to let people know uh, what the crisis is all about, how they can deal with it. We need to make sure doctors and emergency rooms have the tools and medicines they need to combat overdoses. It's got to be a comprehensive campaign. It should be something we should work together on a bipartisan basis. Absolutely. Uh, and it's, you know, it's killing an average of six Rhode Islanders a week. Uh, it's a devastating situation, particularly among young people. And so uh, we need to do everything we can to um, uh, conquer this uh, terrible uh, crisis. And you believe it's a crisis better addressed at the national level than individually on the state levels at this point? Well, I, I, I don't uh, criticize the states for wanting to do things, but I think we need, uh, because it's a national issue, I think we need the national muscle and national money uh, to help alleviate the crisis. Absolutely. And what are some of the other major major issues you'd like to address? Well, certainly certainly health care. We still don't have um, a better solution to Obamacare. Uh, the premiums continue to go up. Uh, drug prices are mm. through, the, through the roof. Seniors are getting hit particularly hard. We need to free up Medicare to negotiate uh, lower drug prices. They've got enormous leveraging uh, authority. We need to uh, enable people to buy insurance plans across state lines. In short, we need to introduce more competition into the market. Okay. Uh, Senator Whitehouse and Senator Sanders, Bernie Sanders, are all in favor of a government uh, Medicare program for everybody. I think that's the wrong way to go. It's incredibly expensive to do that, among other things. Uh, I think a better way is to introduce more competition into the existing system and lower drug prices and have more transparency about results and pricing so that people can do the same thing 
that they do with auto insurance and home insurance and buying their health insurance. And as we had some really big news coming up this past week with the U.S. Supreme Court, first being that landmark decision being made over uh, the power of, of labor unions. What were your thoughts on the decision? Do you think here in Rhode Island will that benefit workers, or do you think in the long run it, it will be detrimental? No, I think it will definitely benefit workers because um, what this does is it frees them up uh, to make decisions on their own without being forced to contribute to um, unions and causes and beliefs and activities that they don't support. So this is in the interest of free speech to have something like this done. And so I think workers who don't want to pay union dues or don't want to contribute to uh, organizations uh, such as that will now have the freedom to do so without being forced to do it. And I think that's consistent with uh, the history of Rhode Island. This is the this is the place of Roger Williams with soul liberty. People should have freedom of conscience to do as they please within law. And so I think this is consistent with that. Very well said. And uh, the other arguably larger news that came out um, just yesterday, I believe, was that Justice Kennedy has announced his mm -hmm. retirement, which means President Trump's going to have the opportunity to put a second person on the, on the Supreme Court, which is almost unprecedented in this time. It seems we've had the same court in place for decades. What, what implications do you think that will have? Well, Justice Kennedy was a so-called swing vote. He voted mostly with the so-called conservative wing of the court, but he also authored uh, in opinions on um, uh, gay marriage, uh, uh, preserving uh, re uh, reproductive rights for, for women, uh, abortion rights. Uh, so he uh, was uh, often a critical fifth vote for one camp or the other Absolutely, on the court. Yeah. So th this is a very important uh, uh, appointment for, for the president. And uh, I think the Republicans, of course, are going to try and uh, put on somebody like a Neil Gorsuch again, who will be a reliably conservative vote. Uh, and uh, the Democrats will try and slow walk whatever nomination comes mm -hmm. forward to try and wait until the midterm elections mm -hmm. in the hope that they'll pick up seats in either the Senate or the House of Representatives. But with a majority vote now be enabling uh, a, an appointment to be confirmed in the Senate, uh, it seems to me that the Republicans are going to swiftly make a nomination from the list that, uh, that President Trump already prepared and um, will not waste any time confirming that justice. What do you think would be the best choice for, um, for the Supreme Court at this time? Another Justice Kennedy who kind of can be, uh, in terms of a party, unreliable or someone who's more aligned with with one party or another? Well, I would hope that it would be someone who um, is a constitutionalist that doesn't invent rights that aren't in the Constitution. Uh, I believe that uh, um, it's good to have somebody who is open to being persuaded, that doesn't come in with views that are so rigid and so predictable that uh, uh, that they're always in one side or the other. True, because uh, their job is, is to interpret the Constitution, interpret. not to just come in with a set decision already. Right, and then the Constitution, as we all know, has these majestic generalities like due process, equal protection of the law. So and Who really uh, knows what exactly that so means. So precedent means a lot. So, yeah, I th but I think you want someone who's had a track record of competence that people can have um, faith in, that will, he's not going to be a political judge uh, or a politician in robes, but somebody who's a true jurist who will do a good faith interpretation of the Constitution. Absolutely. Very, very well said. <laughs> Thank you. And so turning back to your campaign, uh, what, what are the next steps now that you don't, like you said, you don't have to worry about a primary coming up um, in September. What are your next steps going to be until the election in November? Well, as I say, I, 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 now I'm free to really concentrate on the issues between uh, Senator Whitehouse and myself. I want to continue to reach out to voters. I need to make sure that uh, people in this state know who I am, know what my background is, know what my track record is, uh, know what my qualifications uh, are, uh, and I need to do the fundraising that will enable me to get my message out there, to, uh, to be on TV, and do all the things you need to do to be an effective and viable candidate today. So uh, I'm going to be a busy person. Uh, we've, I've got a great staff, a great campaign. So I'm going to be all over the state and all over uh, the issues uh, as uh, we get closer to uh, uh, the big day in November. And so you said your your main thing is to get out your 
your, who you are and what you're all about. What's the number one thing you'd like the Rhode Island voter to know about you as a candidate? I think uh, the thing I want them to know is that I come from a very humble background. Yes, I went to an Ivy League school, but I did so on a financial aid scholarship. Yes, I went to Harvard Law School, but I had to work my way through, through both of those institutions. I was a garbage man in my hometown. I was a mattress bagger in a factory. I was a floor sweeper, a truck driver. So I've done a lot of manual labor jobs. I come from a family where I was the first to graduate from college. So uh, I know what it's like to live paycheck to paycheck. And I think I can identify with the struggles of average working Rhode Islanders and small businesses. I've been a small businessman myself. Uh, I founded my own law firm. So I can identify with that whole um, uh, ethos here in Rhode Island. And so I want people to know that about me. Forget about the Harvard, the Brown. This is a guy who come, came from nothing relatively speaking, and was able to be successful through hard work and education. And I, now I want to give back to a state that's been so good to me. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Bob Flanders, the GOP nominee for U.S. Senate. Keep an eye out for him. He'll be all over the state, I'm sure. And thank you so much for thank joining so us much, today. Thank you so much, Delighted. And stay with us. We'll be right back here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm your local host, Rachel Nunes.